this good? Maybe go up a little bit? Down a little bit? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, my hair is a mess. Ow! I just pulled out so much of my hair. Oh my god, this, <laughs> this video is already so chaotic. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and Today, you guys already see in the title. I don't know why I always act like you guys don't know what this video is about. I'm going to be mood reading for a week because I've been doing a lot of reading vlogs where I have like a theme where it's like fantasy for a week or romance for a week. But I've just been really wanting to do like mood reading because I'm really in a mood for fantasy right now. But who knows, maybe after this fantasy book, I'll want to read like a romance book. And I already have the first book chosen and that is Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. This is the Fairy Loot Edition. It is gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. Look at the naked cover of it. It's so pretty. But yeah, this is about a... Uh, I don't know. The reason why I really want to read this is because I really don't know what this is about. You can read the synopsis on here, but it doesn't give you a really clear explanation on what this book is about. And Philip chose this for my July TBR, which I know, we're in August. And luckily, I chose this to be in my August TBR, so if you haven't seen that video, definitely go check that out. Philip chose this book as the number one book that he wanted me to read in July. Sorry, Philip, but I didn't get a chance to read it. When we were choosing the July TBR, we were both like baffled, like, what is this? What does this mean? I had no idea what was going on. And I've also heard a lot of people saying that they love this book, that it's really beautifully written. So I am going to jump into this book for our first book of the reading vlog. <laughs> Okay, it is Tuesday, day two of the read, read, uh, I'm struggling, I'm struggling. It is day two and I didn't, I didn't read that much last night if I'm being completely honest. I had so much to edit and last night I used most of my time to edit instead of reading which is fine like this is what the video is about it's how realistic it is and how much I do read in a week I'm not gonna try to force myself to read a book if I don't feel like reading but let's talk about the books that I'm reading yes plural books you guys know that I started Divine Rivals and so far I'm enjoying it let me see what page I'm on I'm on page 19 chapter 2 and I'm enjoying it the world that that this book is set in feels really magical and it feels a lot of fun. I don't know if you guys do this when you're reading a book but I end up reading multiple books at the same time because I don't want to force myself to read a book if I don't feel like it and that's the whole point of this video so I thought maybe I should just have another book on the side and read depending on what mood I'm in and it's funny because I chose The Hating Game by Sally Thorne and if you guys don't know about either one of these books I'm gonna put you guys down because my arm is hurting from holding you <laughs> okay so if you guys don't know what these books are about this is basically the same premise but in different settings this is in a fantasy magical setting whereas this is like normal day modern workplace setting both sets of characters are co-workers at the same like editing and publishing company. This one seems more like a magazine newspaper editing company and this one is a book publishing company. And I just thought it was so fascinating that I picked both of these without realizing how similar the concepts are. I'm enjoying them. They're fun so far. I picked up The Hating Game and it's fun. It's about Lucy and Joshua. They both work at a publishing company and they're co-executive assistants to co-CEOs. They hate each other. Lucy is super bubbly, super friendly, and super positive, whereas Joshua is super meticulous, obsessive, and organized, and kind of grumpy. So, yeah, they're working towards the same promotion, and that's funny because that's also what these characters are doing. I'm waiting for this to turn into like a fantasy where the gods come into play. And yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know that I am currently reading both of these at the same time and depending on how I feel, we'll see which one of these gets done first and hopefully I don't pick up another book because I tend to do that and I really shouldn't. We dance in the moonlight, hold hands if the mood's right, make plans to the sunrise and sleep till noon, I'll take you to the beach, get our toes wet and leave after sun. 
and said, and I would do it all again, 'cause I don't want my day to end with always running in circles, try to make up my mind. I read more of the hating game just because it's a little easier to get through. Um, Divine Rivals is an easy read, also, but you know, the hating game is like a rom com book, so it's like super easy to just read through. I wanted to talk to you guys about that book. I need to just put it down for a little bit. <laughs> Tell me why it feels so YA. The amount of times that they keep mentioning Lucy being super tiny, super small, like, oh, this big t-shirt on you looks like a dress. Like, we get it. Why does this feel like one of those Wattpad books that they're always like, oh, the guy is so much bigger and she's like so tiny and like, oh my gosh, she's so breakable. We get it. She's She's short. You're beating a dead horse at this point and it started getting a little bit annoying. And the romance itself feels more like lust than romance. They seem attracted to each other. They're too immature to really do anything other than like bicker at each other. I don't know. It just feels super unrealistic. It's like so baffling. So I need to... I'm putting it down so I can read a little bit more of Divine Rivals. I want to read Divine Rivals. I just need the feeling of the hating game out of my head. The character development feels natural with them growing up and trying to obviously learn to be adults. I feel kind of a disconnect between the story with the gods and the community and the rest of the world. I think the world building right now, I'm a little disconnected from it. It just feels like a regular story with a hint of, oh, the gods are at war in a far off land. It feels like a little bit of a disconnect, but I'm sure it'll come into play soon because I'm only on like page 56. Hello, it is day five, not day five, it's Friday, day four of mood rating for a week. And I read a little bit more of each book in the hating game by sally thorne i'm on page 179 chapter 15 um i don't really know how i feel about this book and i want to say it's because i'm not that far in but i am that far in like i'm halfway through the book it just feels kind of flat it feels very immature and it feels very lusty. I don't understand why or how these characters like each other other than the fact that like they're attracted to each other physically which I don't find very interesting to read because obviously if I'm gonna read a romance book I want to be able to if not connect with the characters understand why and how they're feeling this way and like I understand lust is a thing and people hook up and stuff but they make it seem like they like each other and I just don't know why because they started off with this book literally hating each other and then suddenly they're like attracted I mean, I guess not suddenly. They probably always had this tension between them. It isn't really interesting to read about. And the constant topic of how small, like, short she is and how tall he is, like, it's just so freaking weird to read about. Why don't you talk about your jobs or something? I don't know. It's just not that interesting to me. I, I guess it's because I really just don't feel any type of connection with the characters. It just feels really flat. It feels like I'm reading a bad Wattpad story. And I feel really bad because Janelle really liked this book. But I feel like I should give it more time because she said that it was an okay book until like the confession and I don't know what that means but that's how she described it so I'm gonna obviously finish the book and let you guys know my final thoughts but that's just how I've been feeling the entire way through. As for Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross I am on page where's my bookmark I think I'm, okay I'm a little bit past page 100 and I'm starting to really enjoy this book. At first it started off a little slow but I think it was because you know as for fantasy books you need to have world building and character building so you understand what's going on and I think that was exactly what the first 100 pages was. It's just letting us know like these gods are fighting and why they're fighting and why 
our character Iris is going to do what she's going to do. But I'm seeing how the adventure is about to start and I'm excited. I'm excited to see where this book is going to take me and I'm enjoying this book so much more than The Hating Game. So I think I'm gonna just keep reading this. Hopefully I finish these books before the week is over. That's what I plan on doing, but I don't wanna force myself. So I'm gonna try to be as realistic as possible. I'm going to dive back into Divine Rivals and I will let you guys know, hopefully later tonight, once I read more. Remember when I first told you before I started reading this book that I had no idea what the synopsis was talking about? Like the way it was describing the story made it feel so unconnected to one another like everything just felt so unconnected and I like how it's answering everything like every question I had answered now it's all connecting and it makes a lot of sense I'm getting on about I still can't read a vibe cause my world is on fire but I finished Divine Rivals today. I'm sorry I didn't give like too many updates on this while I was reading it, but there wasn't really anything I could give you without spoiling the story. But yes, I did finish it. I blew through this book. I really, really enjoyed it. It was incredible to read. It felt like a fairy tale without it being super like lovey. Okay, it was lovey dovey, but it wasn't a cheesy, cringy lovey dovey. It was a good love story. It felt like a fairy tale when the setting is war and how war affects people, civilians, soldiers, just communities. And it's really sad, honestly. It's really sad and like it makes you super ancient, ancient, anxious. It touches on a little bit of PTSD. So like the topics are not light. The only reason why I say it's like very fairy tale esque is because of how the magic plays into this world and how Roman and Iris's relationship is. The main thing I want to tell you guys is don't go into this thinking it's like a fantasy book. So rather than it being main plot fantasy with a subplot of romance, think main plot romance with a subplot of fantasy. The fantasy aspect was mainly the gods warring and the slight magic system into the world. I'm sure we're gonna dive into it more because this is a series. I don't know, is it a duology or is it more? I'm not sure how many books are in this. It might just be a duology, but don't quote me on that. Um, I'm sure I'll go into it more, but with this book, it was mainly about Iris and her experience with war. I can't say too much without spoiling it. But I really did enjoy this. I think the author did a really good job making this very beautiful and it makes you really fall in love with the characters. It makes you feel so much for the even support characters that you don't know really because that is just how war is, right? You don't know what the next day holds so that one little experience means so much so it really makes you feel grateful for what you have in that moment it's even as a reader when you're reading it you feel such attachment and drastic feelings towards things whereas normally you'd be like okay cool like that happened whatever yeah i think rebecca ross did a really good job with making you feel the anxiety that comes with war and especially a war between two gods that's 
insane, but I really enjoy this book. I think I'm gonna give this a 4.5. I'm super excited to read the second book for this series. I don't know when it's coming out, but catch me reading it once it comes out. And now, I didn't read much of The Hating Game. I'm currently on page 186. I'm not super thrilled about this book. I don't hate it enough to DNF it, so I'm gonna push through and read this. I just hope that their relationship becomes better and more fleshed out rather than just a simple attraction to one another. I don't know, I think we're relying on physical attraction way too much, but we'll see how it goes. But What's really exciting is that you guys saw the clip that I went book shopping today. We went into the city and we went to the four story Barnes and Noble. So let me give you guys like a quick, quick book haul. I am not gonna go too deep into what these books are just because I'm gonna do a more in-depth book haul video and I think this vlog is gonna come out before that video so I'm just gonna show you guys what I got and you guys might think I'm like insane but that's okay because I know I'm insane. The first book I'm gonna show you is the second book in the Caraval series. I finished Caraval last month and I really enjoyed it. It wasn't like an earth shattering rating but I enjoyed it and I really like Stephanie Garber's writing style. It's really whimsical, it's really magical and it really sweeps you into a fantasy world and it's fun. It's like a little mystery in a fantasy setting. And then I got four other books yeah, I had no self-control. I wanted this series, so I went and got it without even hesitating, so. And that is The Natural series by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I love the Inheritance series. When I found out that she had this series that is basically YA Criminal Minds, I had to go get it. I was so intrigued. All right, it is currently Monday, which is day seven. I didn't update you guys yesterday because I was really, really busy. My cousins came to visit and I felt like I didn't have enough time to really read and give you guys an update. That's what I was gonna tell you originally, but ultimately, it's just because I didn't want to read. I didn't want to read yesterday. Completely normal, like you don't have to want to read every single day, right? But I think it was a lot to do with the book itself, The Hating Game, and I just, I don't know guys, I can't, I don't want to DNF it because I'm so close to being done. I'm on page 293, chapter 24. I literally have 70 pages left to finish this book, but I just, I need to put it down for a little bit because I feel like I'm on the very edge of a reading slump and if I force myself to read any more of this right now, I think I'm going to be in a reading slump. So I just stopped. I didn't want to force myself because that was like the whole point of this video, right? I really tried. I wanted to read this. I wanted to like this. So I gave it more chance and more time in my day. I just really dislike the way they constantly bring up the size. It doesn't make sense. Like the amount of times that they talk about how small Lucy is or how tall and large Josh is you would think Lucy is like two inches tall and Josh is freaking Godzilla or something because it is mentioned so often and it's supposed to be this kind of I don't know like is it a kink or something I'm like no kink shaming or anything but it just doesn't make sense why Sally Thorne keeps bringing up the fact that Lucy is just so so small her, all her ex-boyfriends were all pretty relatively small and you know she's never had a man as big as Josh like no innuendo I meant like height wise and build not but yeah, it's just so weird and the book has so much irony to it because it, once you find out why Josh is a little put offish and why he's so strict and kind of grumpy, it's like, wow, this is really ironic because she was doing the same exact thing and now we're gonna turn it around and be like, she didn't do that. Like now we're gonna act like she wasn't doing that. Lucy is just kind of really irritating to read her thought process is so annoying and then Josh he just feels a little boring I don't hate him he just feels kind of boring he doesn't have that much depth to him and neither one of these characters have any depth to be honest like the only thing you know about her Lucy is that she likes collecting smurfs and then for him there's like the drama aspect that I'm not gonna tell you guys obviously but it just feels so lackluster 
I think that's the perfect word. It feels very lackluster and it has so much immaturity as grown adults in an office setting. It's just really hard to read this because no one acts like this. So today, instead of picking up the hating game, I read my good old pals I don't how to ride which is a manga series and i read volume six to eight there we go and if you guys don't know what this is about it's just a cute little manga romance it's very ya and it's just really simple it's about how these younger kids had a crush on each other when they were little and then they didn't see each other for a few years now they're 17 18 ish and they are reunited they're friends they share same friend group and they're trying to confess their love to another but you know things get really unfortunate yeah i just wanted a little breather a little reset because i was feeling really dragged down i really did not want to read anymore now you're probably thinking oh lucy you can probably finish the hating game now right no absolutely not i don't want to do that so i'm going to pick up the naturals this is the first book in the natural series i want to jump into this because jennifer lynn barnes i love her writing she has a way of writing really short chapters and keeps you on the edge of your seat the entire time that you kind of just don't feel like you're reading so I, you know in jennifer lynn barnes i trust guys i'm only on page 55 chapter 7 but i am loving this book <laughs> I knew Jennifer Lynn Barnes would not disappoint me! Would not disappoint me. She jumps right into the plot and it's already moving like this and I'm so happy I picked this up. And you know what? I'm confident to say that a little bit more of this, I can go back to the hating game and finish it off. Hopefully I'll finish it off today for you guys. A rating, but yes, I'm really enjoying this. about Dean but who is Dean? I, can be I smell the love triangle going on right now. I smell it. It's in the air. I know you Barnes. There's a love triangle brewing and I'm not mad about it. I usually hate love triangles but she fights it in a way that like doesn't really matter. The romance is like such a small subplot of her stories that I'm just like okay whatever. Let's get back to the main plot so I'm not even mad about it but I smell it. Smell it coming. This feels so much like I'm watching Criminal Minds. Imagine the Criminal Minds characters in their youth going through training in the FBI. This is exactly how it feels. I'm loving this book. I'm on page 31. I'm sorry if you guys can hear the fan in the background, it's really loud, but I'm gonna try to make this as quick as possible, but I finished The Hating Game. I read a bunch of The Naturals, like I was flying through this thing. I'm currently on page 120, chapter 16, and I'm loving this book. It feels exactly like you're watching Criminal, Criminal, Criminal. Does anyone else get like super tired and just unable to function after you just had like a really big dinner because that's me right now i just came back from dinner and now i can't function apparently but i would be really sad if i finished this series super quickly so i'm trying to pace myself a little bit so i went back to the hating game and finished the 70 pages that i had left for it and um i don't love the book still but the ending and the last part of the book did re deem it a little bit but i think i'm gonna end up giving the hating game a two star i'm really sorry for the people that love this book it just wasn't for me i just couldn't connect with the characters they just seemed a little irritating to me i hated the concept of her being super small and josh being super big constantly being shoved down my throat i hated that fact and it just felt very disconnected the relationship didn't feel realistic they just seemed physically attracted to each other and that was it it wasn't until the end that you really got the emotional 
and mental aspect of a relationship throughout the whole thing it was all physical attraction and for me i don't enjoy romances like that so this book just wasn't again for me janelle if you're watching this video i am so sorry because she really liked this book anyways that is all for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed as for the natural series i think i'm gonna start my reading for 24 hours video tomorrow so keep your eye out for that video i think it's probably gonna be a week after the video you're watching right now yeah thank you guys for watching again hope you enjoyed and i will catch you guys next time bye She's a Mona Lisa. everyone's lining up to see her there must be something bad for